thought about how did the lion become one of the most important animals in the Chinese folklore. Even though the lion was not even in China until the Han Dynasty. Today I want to talk about how the lion arrived in China and also different type of lion dance. Specifically I'm going to use Taiwan as an example. Before I start, I would like to thanks to the Summer NCTA at Ohio State University for inviting me to have this talk. I got my PhD from the Ohio State University. Today I'm very excited to come back to my alma mater to talk about this topic. I would also like to mention this brought my memory back when I was a martial arts student and eventually I became the national referee and coach in Taiwan. Lions were first introduced to China during the Han Dynasty, when China was already one of the world's great pre-modern empires. As means of staying on good terms with the Chinese imperial court, major and minor Asian states entered into tributary relations with China, sending gifts to the court, including many unusual or highly prized animals and plants. Lions were apparently brought as a tributary gift from West Asia via the Silk Road. The Chinese first thought of the lion as a ferocious wild animal. However, during the Eastern Han Dynasty, the lion's image changed as the Buddhist painting figurines began to be transmitted into China. The Manjushri, who is the Bodhisattva most closely associated with transcendent wisdom in Mahayana Buddhism, he always rides on lions. Through those images, the lion came to be understood as an icon of good power. By the early Tang Dynasty, the image of lion and its association with power and wisdom were so well established that dance performances using lion costumes became part of imperial court ceremonies and entertainment. The first documentation of its performance at court is found in the Old Book of Tang, Chapter of Music, which is published in the early 11th century. After its origins during the Tang Dynasty, the lion dance underwent considerable evolution. By the Song Dynasty, it had become a popular element in many classical and folk traditions. Eventually, it spread throughout the Chinese culture sphere, including parts of East Asia such as present-day Korea, Vietnam, and Taiwan. Just like many other Chinese folklore traditions, several genres of lion dance developed based on different performances practiced and regional variations. Northern lion and southern lion were the two most popular genres. Next, I would like to introduce the Da Long Dong, Golden Lion Troop. The Holo communities from southern Fujian province 
who were part of the Qing immigration from the mainland to Taiwan, may not have brought the lion dance practice during the beginning phase of their immigration. However, the traditional martial art training developed to protect themselves from Taiwan's original non-Chinese inhabitants or from competing immigrant Chinese clans. Therefore, even as late as the beginning of the 20th century, the lion dance in Taiwan featured the use of a shield rather than a lion head. This lion is perhaps the first lion in Taiwan. It has a red nose, which means it is the king of the lion. Also, the lion doesn't have ears because their ancestors told them to just look forward and do not listen to the rumors. This lion belongs to the Da Long Dong Temple, which was built more than 200 years ago in the modern day Taipei city. The temple was one of the most important places for the immigrants from the southern Fujian province. It is not only a religious center, it is a place for people to gather together for all kinds of reasons. The appearance of the temple has changed many times throughout the history but it is still the most important religious center for the locals and the Taiwanese. The training now is held by the Chinese Martial Art Department at the Chinese Cultural University in Taipei. Just like the tradition from 200 years ago, students not only practice the lion dance, but also master the weapons. The martial art practice is always an important part of the lion dance exercise. Students were not allowed to pick up the lions if without martial art training. All performers belong to the genre of Ding Tao, which is a performance group that includes many martial art performances. Ding Tao plays an important role in the festivals, and almost every wealthy temple maintains a Ding Tao. The temple's reason for having a Ding Tao is similar to a village's reason for supporting lion dancers. However, instead of demonstrating military force as in earlier times, Ding Tao now is a demonstration of villages' wealth. In Jin Tao, the lion dance was performed mainly at the festivals, including weddings, deities, birthdays, and in rare cases, the funerals.
All the videos are part of the religious service. They are not performers. The religious still practice lively in Taiwan, and you can see lots of people will follow the whole parade. People believe the lion will keep the bad spirit away and give them good ear in the future. Due to the political circumstance in the late 20th century, particularly during the Cultural Revolution in China from the 1966 to the 1976, creative forms and new interpretations of the lion dance were more prevalent in Malaysia, Singapore, Taiwan, and Hong Kong than in the mainland China. Since then, the overseas Chinese regions has developed and maintained much better cultural practice. For example, Lugang, Taiwan's second largest city in the 17th century and the cultural hub for temples and traditional arts, hosted a national folklore competition in 1978. Such competitions have become increasingly popular, but there are some problems. Because the lion dance was very localized, every city or village has its own style. From the costumes to the music to the martial art movement, and the judge often have their own preferences. Most competitions had their own committees, and the national standards were not fully developed or enforced. Since the year of 2003, there are more and more international competitions. Taiwan selected the best qualified athletes for international games, and those competitions have become a more popular setting than the temple festivals. Even in the international competitions, though, the size of audience is decreasing. The whole education system from elementary to the higher education was westernized since the Japanese time, that is from 1895. It was not until 1991 that Taiwan's Ministry of Education started funding the Lion Dance Clubs at the primary school and secondary schools, as well as the universities. In 2007, the Chinese Cultural University established the first lion dance major in the Department of Chinese Martial Arts. Unlike the local villages, the university provides a series of training activities to prepare students for international competitions. 
All students in university lion dance programs are required to practice routine movement and martial arts basics. Although the students no longer live with their masters, the students are still expected to show great respect for their teachers. This may include, for example, preparing the tea for the professors before each class and bowing to the professors after the classes. In many modern education systems, the study of folk traditions is often one of the last subjects to be included. When institutions of higher education in Taiwan finally began to include the lion dance in their course offerings, it is no longer just a folk practice. Although I must say there is nothing wrong to be a folk practice. From warriors to dancers to athletes, the performers of the lion dance have witnessed the remarkable social changes over the last 200 years. The lion dance as a performance was not a new idea in China. As early as the pre-Tang Dynasty China, the lion dance was already a court performance. Unfortunately, like most court performers in Chinese history, Lion dance performers always had a low social economic status. Even today, some people still believe that becoming a lion dancer is not a good career choice because the athletes are underpaid and still treated as low status performers. As the performance of the lion dance has decreased in temple festivals, Performers continue to seek out the new venues to keep the tradition going. From a local art to an international sport, the lion dance has changed a lot. Traditionally, the lion dancers performed with live percussionist, and the interaction between the percussionist and the lion could be the most interesting part of the performance. Now, recordings have been accepted as a substitute for live percussion, and the tension of the improvisation has been lost. Although its function of a form of fighting no longer exists, the lion dance is still fighting to find a position in the modern world. Even though it is not the best solution, Thanks to the local and international competitions, the lion dance is still being performed, but keeping its tradition and spirit alive in an ongoing challenge. Traditionally, students learned the lion dance through direct transmission from a master. 
Once a master accepted a student, he mentored him throughout the student's life. Usually, they lived together, and the student shared in the household work. The relationship that developed was very deep, and the student's performance of the lion dance at the master's funeral was the final show to respect and appreciate for the master's lifelong teaching. In contemporary times, many people include the lion dance at the funerals, but they do so for a quite different reason. Most people believe that a lively lion dance keeps the bad spirit away, thereby facilitating the deceased person's journey to heaven. Even in the modern time, the lion dance remains an icon of power and a ritual protection for communities as well as the individuals. In addition to the lion dance, there are other type of performances such as the dragon dance at the temple festivals. More performers are required in the performances. Unlike the previous videos we have seen, this one is a performance.
this is a professional troupe, and most performers are majoring in Chinese martial art. During the performance, the dragon should never be tangled. The flow should be smooth, and the body of the dragon should always be smooth and should not be wrinkled. Thank you very much for watching. In fact, my expertise is music. I play a Chinese instrument called Erhu. It is a two-string board instrument. Many people call it Chinese violin. I hope you can check out my YouTube channel. I have many music videos there. Thank you again and 再见.